Hey, what is up everybody? Yes, I've returned to your phone, your computer, your TV, your tablet, your laptop. I don't know what you're watching me on right now, but welcome back. It's me, it's Malcolm, and today. I know I've been away for a while. I have not been feeling well. I've been sleeping more than usual, which is not a good thing. If you're like my age, I'm 26 by the way. But today is special because we have one of those quote unquote drama things that involve YouTube, TikTok, and one of the most popular creators on TikTok that I would never think in a million years I would ever talk about on my channel because she's 16. I don't see the point of talking about her. She's 16. So anything she does, you know, I don't really care about. But it's how we got to this point right here. Everyone, I guess yesterday there was a bunch of drama with other people not involving me, but people still want to um, mention my name. First of all, I have no idea what happened. I don't give a fuck what happened. I'm too busy worrying about me, <laughs> myself, my family, um, and I don't care. I don't entertain it. So um, if you were friends with me and you're not anymore, keep my name out of your mouth. If you already knew who that was, that was never doing this again, man, Jeffree Star. Remember, he said he was never doing this again. That video is almost two years old, but I digress. Of course, today we're talking about Charlie D'Amelio, Dixie D'Amelio, Trisha Paytas, James Charles, and for some reason, Jeffree Star got into the mix but he also quickly deleted what you just saw. So, okay. To start it off, if you wanna know what Charlie D'Amelio did that was so bad, that got people so pissed off before even Trisha Paytas got involved, well, here's the clip in kind of full context, so here you go. Oh, I wish it, I wish I had like more time. Cause imagine if I hit a hundred mil a year after hitting a mil. Was the 95 not enough for you? <laughs> well, I was just like saying like even numbers. Well, right. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching um, our you YouTube video. Thank you so much for uh, being no, here. We're so happy no, that we have you guys as part of our family. Show. Bye, sister. Okay, I'm just going to do it. The outro? Thank you for watching the first ever and most likely the last ever <laughs> episode of Dinner with the Demilios. Thank you guys for having me, James Charles. So as you saw, not really a bad clip. It was just really a bad take. It just seemed, people are saying Charlie seems very like bratty, selfish, self-centered because she didn't hit a hundred million when she wanted to. Uh, to be fair, uh, nobody has hit a hundred million on TikTok. So it was kind of like an awkward scene altogether. And the fact that James Charles had to awkwardly take over for when Dixie tried to end the video and then he was like, I'm gonna end the video. So of course that's awkward. People ran with this. At the point of recording, I think Charlie was at 99.4 million. She has since then lost 1.1 million, uh, I think, they're called followers on TikTok. If I'm wrong, uh, please correct me. Uh, she lost about 1.1 million uh, followers on TikTok in like a single day, in like two days. Uh, she's starting to gain them back though. And the reason is because of what I'm about to tell you right now. Trisha Paytas then uh, gives her commentary on the clip in question. Uh, I just want to say this now. This, what Trisha Paytas said, I actually did agree with at the time. Uh, I'm not saying Trisha Paytas is on the right in this situation, uh, obviously not, because we're about to really get into it. But uh, basically in the clip, she says that, you know, Charlie and Dixon need to humble themselves a little bit. The way they were acting was, you know, kind of unbecoming of themselves, which if you watch the video, it was kind of like awkward and weird. But like I've already said, Charlie is 16. So I can't really get on a 16 year old for being 16, if that makes sense. Uh, so right there and then, 
Trisha said her piece, she gave constructive criticism, like a lot of people have done. And this is where I feel like things went off the rail for everyone involved. Um, Charlie is one of the most popular creators, influencers in the world right now. Uh, I feel like she got famous off the Renegade Dance, but that's a whole nother thing that I'm not ready to get into. Uh, nor do I need to, because people have talked about that part enough. This clip alone led to people sending Charlie death threats, uh, talking to their parents, sending them death threats, sending Dixie death threats. Uh, I will say this now, if you're one of those people that send death threats to a minor over a small, small, small thing that they said in one video that was kind of like a joke, but people like took that the wrong way. Screw you. Uh, there's a special place in hell for you. Uh, you can exit the video stage left. This is my left, even though it's your right. So exit stage left. Thank you. This part of the video is for Charlie. I'm gonna talk to Charlie directly because I you know, she's 16, I really don't have any, any issue with her. Uh, so, of course she's upset. Uh, of course, you know, she's getting death threats and all these kind of things. But, Charlie, you do have to realize that everyone isn't going to like you. I know that sounds very, very harsh, but being in the spotlight like you are, people want you, yes, people want you to mess up. People want your sister to mess up, they want you to mess up, they want your family to mess up. But something I can't let slide though, people did get on Charlie and Dixie for, I guess, cheating in the Mr. Beast competition, trivia competition or whatever, for like $300,000 and people got on them about that. So I feel like this backlash was part that and also part this clip. So I really don't feel like it was just this clip alone that pissed off people or sent them over the edge. I feel like people were just waiting for one more thing and apparently this is the straw that broke the camel's back. I do find it weird that there's uh, other problematic influencers and other problematic people who I'm going about to get into very shortly that have done even worse things. So Charlie, you know, people want you to mess up. Uh, I could say try not to, but I know you're young, so if you mess up, it's okay. Uh, I'm gonna leave her alone because she really didn't do anything. She literally responded in an Instagram Live, which I think we've all learned from Shane Dawson is you should not go on Instagram Live with emotions because you're gonna say some stuff that obviously is not going to come back in your favor. So obviously in this Instagram live, Charlie mentions Trisha Paytas as one of the people criticizing her because of course Trisha Paytas has a platform. So of course uh, calling people out by name, I guess is supposed to do something. I'm gonna tell you right now, it doesn't. So of course, I don't think the D'Amelio sisters knew. I kind of wish James Charles kind of warned them about this. If you mention Trisha Paytas' name in anything, and I really do mean anything, she will respond. Even if she's in the wrong, she's going to respond. We have seen this pattern so, so many times. Um, the only time I've ever defended, quote unquote, defended Trisha Paytas was the Gabby Hanna situation where uh, she was writing a song about Trisha Paytas and all this stuff. Uh, lovely and good. Uh, I already said my piece about the whole situation. Uh, you can check my other videos for that. But basically, Trisha Paytas, whenever she hears her name, she is always there. Uh, she likes to do TikTok drama videos now. I don't know if this is a like a new genre she's trying to get into. She took everything to TikTok and basically called the D'Amelio sisters out, uh, called her parents poor for uh, teaching their daughters the wrong way to act, which I don't know why you need to attack the parents, Trisha. You didn't need to do that. Uh, your first point was good. You should have just left it as it is. Just let Charlie just vent on Instagram Live like she was 
already doing. You should have just left it alone. And then, of course, she brings up James Charles and how he's 21, hanging out with a minor 16-year-old and says it's weird, which then results in James Charles responding to Trisha Paytas. And I'm just going to go back to Trisha Paytas before I go into James Charles because he's not safe in this situation either. Like I said, the only person that really didn't do anything wrong was Charlie. She just had one bad take and it was just awkward. That's all it was. Everybody else though, I have an issue with. So Trisha Paytas, let's not ignore the fact that you used to be best friends with Jeffrey. You're still best friends with Jeffrey. I'm confused about that. Uh, you kind of say you are. You kind of say you are best friends, and then the next week you are best friends. I don't know what that's about. Let's also not forget that you are friends with Shane Dawson and all the things that he has been accused of, which is far worse than what you are accusing James Charles of. So let's not act like everybody in your life is perfect or in the right because they have been proven to do way worse things that you've accused James of doing, which is, of course, grooming Charlie, uh, which is so bizarre to even think about. That is disgusting. Uh, yikes. Let us also not uh, forget that you have also done blackface. And before somebody says Trisha didn't do blackface, it was a Japanese traditional style uh, if you actually look into it, it is a Japanese style basically saying this is blackface if you really want to look into it. So, that's not good. Also, the racist things that you have said, Trish, come on now. Are you kidding me? You're not a saint in this situation. You have also done wrong. You have also had a past that you're trying to run away from. You say you apologize and on all these things, but yet there's like another TikTok, there's another video every week where you do something offensive to another race. Um, just recently you were doing the German, the Nazi, Heil Hitler sign. I don't know what that was all about. You're taking the trolling a little too far at that point. So disgusting, stop it. You are not as innocent as you want to portray yourself stop so i'm done with trisha i'm trying to do this in a condensed way where this isn't like a 30 minute rant but i have to call out these people like i said charlie's innocent i really don't have an issue with her it's the people that follow so of course james charles has his rant about you know how you need to keep you and your best friend in line because you are the problem and I'm going to say this now, where I grow up, just because you talk fast, you don't uh, fumble your words, you talk very articulate, does not mean you're right. Uh, James Charles, let's not forget that you were microaggressive towards Alicia Keys when Alicia Keys was not even coming out with a makeup line like you thought she was. She was coming out with a skincare line and just your attitude towards her so microaggressive and the fact that you also blocked my friend Colin Barry for him calling you out on that situation for what kind of weird kind of weird I'm just saying I'm just saying uh, let's also talk about like I get it you proved yourself with the No More Lies video. I understand that, right? I understand you cleared yourself of something so horrific and disgusting and more words that I can't even explain. However, it seems like now you're taking that and even when the situation is even brought up, you still bring it up and try to just throw as much shade as you can. Like I said, I get it, you cleared your name, but you still are getting the same mentality as before when you were canceled the first time. 
like I said, you saved yourself the first time because the No More Lies video, you did that well. However, now you are having the same ego and same attitude that got you in trouble before. And I've seen a lot of videos on YouTube specifically that say, you know, these TikTokers are going to get you in trouble one day, which I also believe myself. So I just find it weird that honestly, you didn't need to insert yourself. You could have just let Trisha say what she said. Of course, the accusation was pretty bad. However, you of all people should know Trisha Paytas will not let things go. So if you keep giving her ammo, if you keep giving the things she says life, she's going to keep going. So ranting on TikTok, talking really fast, being all super passionate, she's going to just keep going. So you could have just stopped, let her have her moment. You and Dixie both could have just let it go. That's all I was gonna say about that. Dixie and James could have just let it go, let Trisha have her venting moment because now it's turning to something that it shouldn't have even became. For what? Also, James, you want to talk about people being canceled and all these kind of things and people getting all these insulting messages. Let us also not forget that you yourself have gone to these parties during a pandemic, not wearing a mask on multiple, multiple occasions. And when you did get called out, you gave a notes app apology. I can't even remember, but I know it obviously wasn't a YouTube apology. If you're gonna say in that video when he was like, I'm not including the party footage, that does not count. I'm sorry, that does not count. You could have sat down and make a video and say, hey, I partied during a pandemic, that was wrong. I should have been wearing a mask. I should have been social distancing. You didn't do that. You just wrote it in a text in a YouTube video, and you also did a notes app apology when you got called out about it, which, you know. For what? Your TikToker friends love to party, and uh, obviously you do too. So let's also act like you haven't done anything wrong, James. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. And the fact that now your TikTok friends are keeping this going. Like, I just saw Larray call out Trisha Paytas not too long ago. Didn't need to do that. Just let it go. I'm telling you right now, I've dealt with people like Trisha Paytas and all throughout high school. These kind of people will not let it go. They will milk it until you either give up or you give up, basically. Not saying Trisha Paytas is right. I'm just saying Trisha Paytas will keep this going for days. And it seems like she's going to. Now we're at the part where I, my jaw dropped. Uh, I was shocked, bamboozled, disgusted, flabbergasted. I ran out of adjectives. So, for this part, my friend Colin, I'm gonna let him take this part. So take it away. For what? Exactly, for what? That is what you're gonna say after I talk about the clip that I can't play because it'll be copyrighted. But Dixie D'Amelio, in the middle of the night, decided to post a TikTok, basically calling out Trisha Paytas. Okay, perfectly, perfectly fine. TikTokers do this all the time where they call out other people. However, this kind of TikTok was different. Dixie D'Amelio decided to take an audio clip from Trisha Paytas singing along to NWA's F The Police. And if you know who NWA is, they're obviously a black rap group back uh, in the day. 
Of course, they use the N-word a lot. Uh, I obviously can't say it either because YouTube will demonetize that, which... Anyway, so Dixie decides to dance to Trisha singing along to this song where Trisha does say the N-word in said song. What makes this so, so bad is the fact that why did you need to do that? I'm, I'm being serious right now. What was your goal to post that TikTok exposing a white creator saying the N-word while you, a white creator, doing a dance from a black girl who, by the way, Dixie, you and your sister didn't even credit when you both got famous off the renegade dance or did or did you think nobody would notice what i also find disgusting is that you tagged her in said video that didn't honestly have anything to do with her this was some drama between you and trisha paytas so i'm confused as to why you needed to do the renegade dance poorly first of all Secondly, you need to tag the original dancer even though after months when the Renegade was hype, you didn't even like give her credit, but you obviously went on TV, did interviews, things like that. Didn't credit her, but what about it? Only did it after so many people called you and your sister out about it. I find that funny. Also, I find funny that all these white creators in the comments of this TikTok uh, one being Tana Mogo. I also completely validate your frustrations, Nessa, seeing me get so many things so easily that were probably so much more difficult or impossible for you. Yep, that Tana Mogo. Tana Mojo, Tana... Thank Paris Hilton friend. Do not care about her name. She's irrelevant. Something I've always said, if Tana's on your side about anything or encouraging something in your favor, you did something wrong. You obviously did something wrong because hours later you decided to delete the TikTok and say such things as, I've made my point. What was your point? Because now, instead of petty TikTok, YouTube drama, it feels like you've now dragged the black community into a situation that we didn't ask to be in because now Trisha and Dixie are both showcasing clips where both of them have said the n-word haven't said the n-word i don't care why did you post a tiktok in the first place and second of all you really just exposed 43.9 million of your fans to something that's obviously offensive and when you deleted it you didn't even say i apologize to the black community uh i did something in passion i shouldn't have done that but of course you didn't do that. You just said, I made my point. For what? Thank you, Colin. Once again, for what? For what reason did you need to do a poor dance of the Renegade that was made by a black girl that you didn't even give credit for in the beginning when that dance was at its peak because honestly the original creator should have gotten as much or even more exposure than you and your sister ever did but that's beyond me we can't change the past now obviously but you decide to tag her now in a video relating to drama about another white creator saying the n-word to a song by nwa that confuses me to the point where for what thank you colin because he, colin took the words right out of my mouth for what and now finally i told you i was going to summarize this in a way that wasn't too much because there's a lot more but it's filler I just got to the main, main points of the argument. Jeffree Star, 
today. Today is Friday, November 20th. Yes, Friday, November 20th. Jeffree Star decides to come out randomly today uh, just to make everything in perspective. Nobody mentioned Jeffree Star's name. James Charles probably alluded to it saying, check you and your best friends because you yourself are the problem. Also, Trisha did say something about uh, some people aren't my friends anymore, but I don't remember her saying Jeffree Star's name specifically either. Jeffree Star decides to come on today on Instagram and just Kind of like how Shane Dawson did with Tati Westbrook, if you remember that. Very unhinged, very aggressive, very angry. It is a 25 second clip. I'm not going to censor it because I need you to understand how angry this guy is. So, here you go. Everyone, I guess yesterday there was a bunch of drama with other people not involving me, but people still want to um, mention my name. First of all, I have no idea what happened. I don't give a fuck what happened. I'm too busy worrying about me, <laughs> myself, my family, um, and I don't care. I don't entertain it. So um, if you were friends with me and you're not anymore, keep my fucking name out of your mouth, bitch. That is the real Jeffree Star. Just want to get that out of the way. That is the real Jeffree Star. Some people said that that Jeffree Star is scary. Let's not forget that people like Jeffree Star have said he wanted to throw, throw bleach on a black woman. Let's also not forget how poorly he treated Jackie Aina. Let's also not forget the Davi Bailey situation where Jeffree was exposed for lying about it. Let's not forget that Jeffree Star has ruined every friendship he has had in his life. Let's not forget, Jeffree Star never addressed his racial past. And if you say that video called racism that he did, he deflected and it was trash. The gold couch apology where he apologized to James, trash. I don't know why people support Jeffree Star still. That's the real Jeffree Star that you just saw. That angry, sinister, narcissistic person that you just saw. That is Jeffree Star. Whoa! That wasn't as long as I hoped it would be. I didn't want to go for an hour like I did with the Mikey versus Swoop video, but I had to get these five people out of the way like I've already said, I don't think Charlie did anything wrong. She said one bad thing and people ran with it because, like I've already said, people want Charlie D'Amelio to fail. Uh, that's just how it is sometimes. The more famous you get, the more people want you to mess up so they can, like, celebrate your downfall. That's just the way it is. It's not just Charlie. Uh, other celebrities, when they mess up, people have the same kind of reaction. But everybody else... Trish, okay, if you're not innocent, stop it. James, you're not innocent, stop it. Dixie, you're not innocent, stop it. Jeffree Star, I hope your launch is going well. I heard you're not selling out, but you hate to see it. Once again, it is Malcolm, that's me. If you hate me, I don't care. <laughs> I don't. So, enjoy that. Subscription button up here. Two other videos over there for your own free time. Without further ado, I wish you well. I wish you good health. And I will see you again next time.